the problems with our traditional approach are evident throughout Ohio. You can see that in f increased flooding because stormwater is moving faster and you have greater volumes of stormwater. You can see it in erosion. And then for local governments where this really plays out is bridge structures are undermined, homes are eroded as streams move around, residents continue to complain, and in large rain events, we get significant flood volumes which can have much larger impacts. So it's a nuisance, it's a cost, and it's a concern for residents and property values. The whole idea behind good stormwater management is to slow water down, let it filter into the landscape, and then slowly run off. Stormwater management should be thought of as an asset for new development and for redevelopment projects and something that we engineer into the site very early on and talk about just as we do how many buildings does the site yield, what uses is the site going to have. Stormwater management practices now have to be designed to catch dirt. Sediment is a, you know, a byproduct of the construction process which will go on a few years even after a project is built out. So, what we've done here, these original basins were sediment basins, and they filled up with some sediment to a level that we anticipated, calculated out. Then they were planted with uh, appropriate plant materials. So that's really the main way we've caught silt from coming off the site by filtering it. And of course, there's the standard erosion practices of silt fence and uh, protecting inlets and that type of thing. And also, by keeping a buffer around the wetlands, any silt that runs off the lot then has to filter through this vegetation so it never reaches the wetlands. Stormwater management costs money and it's important either the developer, the homeowners association or some other financing mechanism to have the long-term operation and maintenance of stormwater practices covered for the whole lifetime of that practice. It doesn't matter if you're mandated to do this or not. Better stormwater management, streamside setbacks are good planning, good zoning, and good design that will save you money going forward. Generally, townships or communities that have their development still to happen don't think that these discussions about stormwater management practices apply that much to them. They have a chance now to prevent all the costly infrastructure that the more developed communities are struggling with today. In rural settings, we don't tend to have the storm sewers all the infrastructure. We tend to try to keep that natural look as much as we can rather than a hard concrete engineered structure. We know this is going to be a two or three acre lot. Wouldn't it be better to just let it run across the land, filter through the vegetation and slowly get to the stream rather than piping it up to a storm sewer and then shooting it down to some other place for it to be treated. The bioswale or infiltration trench, the reason for its use is for small drainage areas to allow it to percolate through the soil pollutant removal and slow release of the stormwater. You can have uh, just a, a sandy gravelly top to it or you can actually plant grass and some more advanced applications they actually will put plants, different types of flowering plants for aesthetics. It's much cheaper for communities to deal with their stormwater management issues through good design and good planning than to go back in and try to fix and maintain infrastructure. Always cheaper to prevent than to fix.